My rabbi tells me the Trinity is a pagan invention that contradicts our Jewish faith of monotheism. Why don't we read the Hebrew scripture and the New Testament to see how the concept of the Trinity originates? The concept of the Trinity is that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are one in essence, but three in person. The three are in unity and equality to each other. However, they are distinct from each other. The Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is not the Father or the Son. But this concept of the Trinity is found only in your New Testament. I can show you the Trinity is rooted in the Hebrew Scripture. First of all, let me ask you a question. Who do you think the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob is? He is the only true God of Israel. Deuteronomy 6 4 says here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. You are absolutely right. In Exodus chapter 3, the Lord God appeared to Moses. He was identified to be the angel of the Lord. This Malach, angel, messenger, said explicitly, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. This messenger, being sent by God, is distinct from God, but equal to God. When you keep reading the rest of this chapter, this angel of the Lord is identified to be the Lord God. This divine being is one in essence and is in unity with God. So you are saying this angel of the Lord is God? Absolutely. There is another messenger, whom God sent as a servant, to be the Messiah of Israel, prophesied in Isaiah 53. Jesus fulfilled the prophecy 2,000 years ago when he came to this earth. He declared to the world that he was one with God the Father. He is God the Son. What about the Holy Spirit? My rabbi tells me the Holy Spirit is the divine force of God. Do you remember the story of the people of Israel contending with Moses in the wilderness? Alluding to that event, Isaiah 63.10 says, They rebelled and grieved His Holy Spirit. The Hebrew Bible presents the Holy Spirit, not just as a divine force but as an individual, with personality. Only a person can be grieved. The same event was reiterated in Psalm 78. It reads, How often they provoked Him in the wilderness, and grieved Him in the desert. Yes, again and again, they tempted God, and limited the Holy One of Israel, it should be pointed out that the Holy Spirit is equal to God. The Holy Spirit first appeared with a special role in the creation. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. The writer of the psalm says, You sent forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the earth. Job says, The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Please note that the Spirit is a distinct person sent by God. He is in unity with God. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of God, and in many instances, He is called the Spirit of Adonai. He has a special relationship with the Messiah. The Messianic chapter Isaiah 11 says, There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, some ancient sages understand that the Spirit of God which moved upon the face of the waters is the Spirit of the Messiah. So we can see that God, the Messiah, and the Holy Spirit are in unity. In Exodus 24, God said to Moses, Come up to see the Lord. There seems to be a theological issue, why did God ask Moses to come up to see the Lord? In Sanhedrin 38b, there was a story where someone asked Rav Edith why God did not say come up to me but said come up to the Lord. Rav Edith could only say that the term Lord was referring to Metatron, the angel found in Exodus 23, who brought Israel into the Promised Land. He added that the name of the Lord is in this divine being, and he has the authority to forgive sin. In Exodus 33:20, God said no man shall see me and live. But upon the instruction of God, Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel went up the mountain to see the Lord. Exodus 24 says, They saw the God of Israel, and on the nobles of the children of Israel, 
he did not lay his hand. So they saw God, and they ate and drank. Obviously, they saw a divine being called Metatron by Rob Eady, and survived. Then who do you think the Metatron is? That so-called Metatron can't be anyone other than God himself. He is the angel of the Lord, who first appeared to Moses in Exodus 3, the one who says I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He has the authority, pardon sin. Only God has the power to forgive sin. The Hebrew scripture says for you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive. He has the name of God in him. He is called Adonai. In Isaiah 42, 8, God says, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another. Yes, I think I can understand that Moses Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel saw the divine being, who was distinct from God but equal to God. In the New Testament, there is an explanation. In John chapter 1, Jesus is revealed to be the Son of God. The mystery of God being seen is given in verse 18. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. In the book of Colossians, it is further revealed that he is the image of the invisible God. Jesus himself explained to his disciples, He who has seen me has seen the Father. He also said, I and my Father are one. The concept of the Trinity, rooted in the Hebrew scripture, is not only the understanding of Christians. I would like to introduce to you a modern Jewish scholar, Benjamin Sommer, He is a professor of Bible and ancient Semitic languages at Jewish Theological Seminary, New York. He's not a Christian or a Messianic believer. He wrote a book, Bodies of God in the World of Ancient Israel. Please listen to what he said about his agreement with the concept of the Trinity. Actually, one of the more radical conclusions that I came to, much to my own surprise, when I was writing this book, and this is not at all what I had intended to do, because in various ways that we could discuss if you're interested, I'm actually rather uncomfortable with my own conclusion here, but as a scholar, I got to call him as I see him. Um, one of the conclusions that I came to, to my shock when I finished this book, is that we Jews have no theological objection to the doctrine of the Trinity. We Jews for centuries have objected to the Trinity, have labeled it pagan, have said, well, that's clear. There you can see that the core of Christianity doesn't come out of the, the, the Hebrew Bible, the Tanakh, what they call the Old Testament. Really, they're being disloyal to the monotheism of the Old Testament. Actually, I think that that's not true. To my surprise, I came to the conclusion, somewhat to my dismay, I came to the conclusion that we Jews have no theological right to object to the Trinity. Theologically, I think that the model of the Trinity is an old, ancient Near Eastern idea that shows up in the Tanakh, and that in a different way shows up in Jewish mysticism as well. Please check the references. These references are also available under the description of this YouTube. You are invited to watch the other videos on the playlist of this YouTube channel, on this subject of the deity of the Messiah, and the compound unity of God.